Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and you join me today for the fourth of my Sim Airport tutorials and this time we're looking at security. The ability to ensure that passengers can only go where they're allowed to go. So only passengers who have a ticket, have passed through security, can board a plane. And passengers with neither of those things, those undocumented passengers if you will, are unable to breach security and get into the aircraft areas. Now, in essence, it's relatively simple. You need a security zone, which buffers the insecure zones, the ticketing areas and so on, and protects the departure lounge area where passengers wait to board their aircraft. And this is what I've got here. It's essentially the starter airport that you can uh, have enabled when you start a new game in career mode or in sandbox mode. Uh, I've just expanded it a little bit so it's easier for me to show off one or two of the things I want to do in this first segment of this security tutorial. I'm also actually running in sandbox mode with instant build turned on, infinite money, so I don't need to worry about the cost of things or making money. But everything we look at here will apply to whatever way you're playing the game, career mode or sandbox with the financing and stuff enabled. So everything we see here will be relevant to your game. One thing I've not done here is turn on all research and we'll look at that uh, a little bit later when we look at some of the technologies you can research and the sort of progress progression you need to make to get those tools. Right so what we need to do is I've got a number of flights scheduled there we go for the morning and afternoon so I need to progress the game until those flights and passengers start arriving. Okay, so our passengers have started turning up, they're getting the tickets, they're being checked, going through the security zone, and just like, as I said, the starter airport, there is no distinction between arriving and departing passengers, really, apart from the fact that departing passengers will need to pass through the security area here. And having a closer look at the security zone, when you're until you've done the research for the additional features, which we'll come to, obviously, later, consists of three essential elements. An ID check, basically checking your passport and ticket, a baggage scanner and the metal detector here. And notice the orientation, the metal detector and the bag scanner have arrows on them just to make sure they're pointing in the correct direction. They allow the passenger to go straight through from ticket desk to departure lounge. Ideally place the metal detector here alongside the bag scanner. It can be placed elsewhere but as you see when you watch these passengers, they pass straight through from the bag depositing through the scanner to picking up their baggage or their, their luggage, whatever, whatever it is, whatever they carry, they carry on stuff, isn't it? That's what they're carrying. If you put this metal detector anywhere else, if depending on where it is, you can get passengers, thank you, passing through my display, you can get them going around in loops, which... It'll work, but it is just t wasting time, basically, and you do not want to waste time on a busy airport. Now, as you saw there, one thing that you've got in the starter airport uh, and in this airport here is there is no way for arriving passengers coming off their aircraft to get to baggage claim without going through security. It works. There's nothing wrong with that, but it is kind of, it's not how real airports work. So what we want to do is establish for ourselves a different channel for departing and arriving passengers. And this is why I've expanded the starter airport here to create this sort of bit of wall here to start with. And I'm going to put in some more wall along here to separate them out. So my arriving passengers will take this channel out here, go through this door, pick up their bags if they've got bags, and departing passengers come in this way and go through security. And that neither, never the twain shall meet, as you might say. So let's slow this down a little bit. Let's get some wall built. There we go. I'm tying that off there. So now my baggage claim is not accessible to departing passengers. And for arriving passengers, they will go down this channel here. So let's delete that bit of wall. Demolish that. And what then happens is the airport becomes insecure. We see these asterisks, these asterisks, these exclamation marks here saying this re gate requires a secure zone. Likewise, on the gate agent desk, it requires a secure area by and being secured by one or more security zones, which it sort of is, except for the fact that passengers could arrive from the drop-off zone here, 
go through this door here and go straight into the departure lounge without going through security. So that is the security breach we've got here. As you saw, so easy to do, but thankfully also very easy to fix. What we have here is what could be called a security gate, if I could spell it correctly, a security exit. Now notice on these they have two sides. They have a green saying enter, a red, no entry. So obviously you want to put them in this way because we need to allow people coming off their planes to enter this zone, this corridor here to get the baggage claim. But we do not want people coming in from this door and breaching our security. So this is the way around we want them. And I'll just put some carpet there so it looks just neat, as neat and tidy. So what we should now see is all our arriving passengers, like those two, should now go through that gate and exit the airport that way. They will not go through the security zone. They could, if they wanted to, obviously they couldn't pick up any baggage if they went that way. Most passengers will tend to go that way through. Now, there is a, another tool we can use to help direct passengers, because on a big airport, that's what you want to do. You want to direct passengers to go exactly where they want to go, where you need them to go as quickly as possible. And that's one-way signs, or sorry, one-way paths. Now, one-way paths are not immediately available. You need to research them. So let's have a look at the research options that are available to you, which could help in a security issue. So looking at research, the one-way paths here are under the construction research, which I have started a while ago. We've only got a, a less than an hour to wait for it to come through to get a foreman. There's the one-way path, and that allows you to direct passengers in a particular direction, which obviously on a big distributed airport is very helpful to do so that you know exactly where people are going. However, there are issues with it. You do need to be careful that you're not sending people down a direction, down a path from which they cannot escape. That's one of the key aspects of designing an airport and airport security, is people must have a way of escaping from wherever you've sent them. So for example, if people arrived for my flight, but missed it, the flight took off before they could actually get through to the gate agent desk, where would those passengers go? They need to be able to get out of this area here, otherwise you will find people not actually entering the area. We'll look at that as we go through this tutorial. But having this separate exit here does the trick for us. So it means people can go in whichever direction they need to. They can escape from the secure zone by going down here. Now, returning briefly to research, the other thing that can be very helpful to research is advanced security. And this gives you bigger, better, faster means of getting people through security. And we'll look at that when we do that research. Finally, while we're looking at the basic airport design and potential errors of judgment that you might make or mistakes that you could make, one thing I tended to do when I was building my airports, I, when I first got the game, was I would build foundations to expand the airport like here, I might say, I want this ticket zone to be bigger. I want this whole area to be bigger. Is I would build something across the fence here. Now, because I've got instant build turned on, it's not an issue. But if I do not have instant build on, doing this could be an issue. Because what the workers will do is they will tend to demolish the fence first so they can then build the foundation. And what happens when you take fence down? You get an insecure airport. So you do need to make sure you don't breach security in any way. Now, before I fix that, let's look at one of the tools that will help us work out where the problem is. In fact, there are two tools that we could use. They're over here in the overlays. So we've got secure areas, the man with the security cap on. And that shows us here the secure and protected zones, as it calls them. Now, at the moment, I've only got one security zone, which is the security zone itself. That is the only secure part of the airport, apart from a storage room here, which I have protected with staff doors, so that only staff can get through there. So whoever they are, no passenger will ever enter this area. And also this part of the airport up here is also protected because there's no doors on it whatsoever. So nobody can get into. So it's essentially secure. Or as it's called protective, because it's not behind the security zone. 
if I were to fix this flaw in my design by putting that fence back in there, there we go. This is what it should look like. The whole space around, if we move this on a little bit, there you go, get rid of the exclamation marks. The whole space around your gates, your departure zone area and so on, needs to be green, needs to be secure. And as you can see that now is, because there's no broken fences, there's no way in to bypass the security zone to get to the gates and the aircraft. So everything there is perfectly secure. That is good. It becomes a bit more complicated as you get a build, build a bigger and more distributed airport, but we'll see that as we go through this tutorial. Another way of looking at this is the sector display, which breaks down the various sort of areas of your airport in terms of the zones and the unzoned areas. So for example, here in my arrival corridor, if you will, we've got a baggage claim zone, which is a, a specific zone. That's not secure, doesn't need to be. And also this little sector here, the remains of that corridor, which isn't zoned specifically, is also described as not secure because people can enter it from the outside. Likewise, the ticketing hall here and these two toilet areas, the restrooms. But all this area here, the security zone and the area behind it is secure. By, secured by the security zone and by the security gates down here. Likewise outside, this whole outdoor sector is secured because of the fencing and the walls that we've built to protect it. So those can be very handy in identifying what parts of your, air, your airport have broken. So what we're going to do, I'm going to move on a little bit and we'll build on some more complexity to our airport and see what other issues arise as we build larger gates and multiple floors. So we have a single floor, ground floor airport working perfectly. We've got ticket desks, security desks, gate agent desks, people getting to their planes through those gates. Everything is very nice and secure. But eventually you will probably want to get some large planes coming in for which you need a large gate. And large gates are only accessed through floor two, through a upper floor. So we need to ensure that people can get to this gate after having passed through a security zone and also can get out again through the departure, through the baggage claim area. Now, one of the best ways to do this is, before you set up all the flights and everything else, is put the floor in place and then use our little secure areas check here and check that it is secured, which it is, because the only way they can get up or down these stairs is having passed the security zone here. If they're coming in from a flight off this large gate here, they can go down these stairs. Stairs are bi-directional, so they can go up and or down them as they need to. And they can come down these stairs and then exit through this security exit here. Or, remember, people do transfer to different flights. So if they're catching a flight from one of these smaller gates, they can again get down those stairs and they've already gone through the security zone. So that's all catered for. That's not a problem at all. However, you may be thinking to yourself, I've got a lot of planes coming in. I've got hundreds of passengers going through these large gates upstairs. Can my single store, my single security area here cope? So why don't we put one upstairs as well and have people checking in and going through security upstairs? So where would we place that? I mean, we don't need to here. But let's say we want to do that. Now, the thing to remember here is it should be a separate security zone to the one you already have. And the way to do that is to make sure those steps are prior to or outside of that first security zone area. So these stairs here should be up here. So let's put that in place. Let's do some building. I've got some building already in place here. Let's get the carpets down and we'll come back to that when the security zone has been set up. OK, so I have just opened up this uh, extra area of this upper floor and put the steps in from uh, from before this uh, ground floor security zone so they can get their tickets and then go up those stairs. The problem is, of course, is there is no security zone up here for them to pass through. So this area is now insecure. That's the only secure zone there. What we do need is the extra security zone up here. And notice this is not secure, so we can put in our security zone as being adjacent to 
a non-secure area. So if we put this, uh, say, here, that will do nicely. And now that whole first floor, well, the departure area is now secured. And as you can see, the exclamation marks have disappeared from the gates. So let's actually populate that security zone with appropriate equipment. So from the ob Objects Ops section here, let's have a look at the remote bag scanner, which is one thing you can research. I've done all my research now. Uh, the advanced security here allows you to use remote baggage scanners for more efficient security operations. And we'll see what's more secure, what's more efficient about it when we get it in place. So we're looking for a remote bag scanner. They are bigger and more expensive. But hey, they're faster, so that's all good. So we'll put you in there. Uh, let's put uh, two, let's put three of you in there. We need the metal detectors. So make sure you're going in the right direction. There you are. And there. And there. That is splendid. There is a bigger body scanner here. But these are much slower than the metal detector scanners. Uh, so you only you don't want to put those in if you want efficient operations, but they may be requested by certain airlines. So if you're getting into airline negotiations, you may need to uh, deploy a couple of these baggage, these body scanners uh, within your security areas. So we do need some ID stands. So we'll put you uh, there, there, and there. That's good. Right. So one final thing then on these remote bag scanners is they need a remote security station. And the benefit here of the remote security station, if I can find it down here, is that this station is where one person sits and that one person can monitor all these bag scanners. So you only need one person manning this desk. You don't need a security member of staff on each of the bag scanners. You still do need them on the ID checks and on the metal detectors, but that's all. So you're saving a number of members of staff, so you're saving that cost. One thing to remember is that the more bag scanners you put assigned to a remote scanner, the slower, the more inefficient it will get. Now, the general understanding is that four or five is the optimum number of remote bag scanners attached to each individual remote security station. If you go more than five, they will get that bit slower. Okay, right, so let's see how this works. Let's, uh, do we need this? Do we need these stairs here? Yes, these stairs here are useful for transfer passengers. They've gone through security either downstairs or upstairs. They can still go downstairs now to transfer, or in fact, they need that to exit, to get through the security exit, to claim their baggage down here. We have people coming up now from downstairs to go through our new remote bag scanners to catch their flight out here to wherever that flight is going. And as you can see here, everything is secure apart from this bit here, which ties in with the ticket hall down here is, un is insecure. So everything maps out exactly as we need it. What we could do to make departure, what's to make the arrivals better or slightly more easy for the passengers is to put a, uh, a couple of stairs in here actually. Let's put some stairways down here. Can you go down there? Yes you can. Now that should still work because this stairway is leading into only that baggage claim area. Or have I? Oh, I know I have compromised it, you see. That stairway is allowing people to come in through here, go up here, and bypass in security. So one thing we could do here is put in a security gate here, as we've done down here. Or alternatively, what we could try doing, perhaps, and this isn't strictly in the spirit of airport security, is put in these one-way paths. So if we put you here to say you can only go in that direction from these stairs, will that help our security? Yes, it does. 
because the one-way path will prevent passengers going in that direction. So they can come up these stairs as much as they like, but they cannot bypass our security. And the one-way path, as a reminder, is a technology you need to research in this construction tree here, one-way paths. Now, one thing you might do, because you're looking for speed of throughput, you need to get people moving through your airport as quickly and efficiently as possible, is replacing stairs with escalators. Now, the thing to remember about escalators is they only go in one direction. So on these stairs, for example, people can go up and down each set of stairs, each stairway. An escalator, as you can see, has a green end and a red end. The green end means they can enter this end, the red end means they cannot. This is only an exit end. And as you can see, what's happened here, I've put in this unidirectional escalator in the ticket hall, going up to my upper floor here so they can pass through security. But I'm getting an error message. If I look at secure zones, it's all secure. They do actually have a way out down here through this uh, baggage claim area, through the arrivals corridor, as I have a habit of calling it. But it means they've got to go out of the airport and back in again to get up. The problem here, and this is highlighted by the message you see here on the exclamation mark, if I hover over it, is the sector cannot be vacated. There is no real simple way of people getting up here, realising they can't get through to their flight, and go down again. So they might have missed their plane, for example. They can't get down. That's the main thing. So although the secure zones might look OK, the error message here is quite clear. It can't be vacated. And that is because we've got a one way system which doesn't allow them back out again. There's a main one of the main rules of security within Sim Airport. People must have a way out again from the system. So if we just put in our escalator going in the other direction, down there I think it was we'll take it that way there you go so green at this side and red down the other side so they have an up and a down and as you can see everything is now hunky-dory that exclamation mark has gone one final thing I think on this security tutorial overview is a look at one of the remote gates there are two types of remote gate now in the game and this was added I think in the last update uh, prior to January 2021 when I'm recording this uh, where you could actually make remote gates either walk to or bus gates so either passengers would walk from the gate, ex gate agent desk here and walk across the tarmac to their flight or they would catch a bus now obviously a bus gate does require more expense you need to buy a hangar you need to buy some apron buses you need to lay down this bus pickup zone. Now, that's that's all well and good. Again, it depends on how you want to defi define and design your airport. One cute thing you can do with the remote bus pickup spots is you can define them to either have two doors, one for entry and one for exit, or a single large door which covers both those um, crossing points there, both entry and exit through the same gate. So what is possible to do is by using the uh, d the two door option here is to have your passengers go in through one door here and a completely separate closed off arrivals door for passengers coming in from their aircraft and going out through the baggage claim area. Now, of course, this does give me an issue here is passengers coming in from this gate here how would they do a transfer to another flight? That's the issue we've got at the moment. They will have to go out and all the way back round again, which could mean they miss their flight. So you will need to consider if you're doing this very strict of arrivals going in one direction through one channel and departures going through another channel, you do need to consider the fact that people will move from arrival to departure and give them routes to do that. OK, so I'm going to put a, a couple of flights on that gate and we'll run forward to tomorrow and just double check that this all actually works for me and the way I've set it up. And here we are on the following day. We have a couple of flights lined up for our remote gate here, which is uh, serviced by a bus. 
which will come out of our hangar here and pick our passengers up from the ground floor here on the remote bus pickup. I mean, just a, a point on, on this gates thing. I mean, the normal remote gate, which has been in the game for, well, forever, basically, uh, will only operate from the second floor. The remote gates, whether they're bus or walk to, will all operate from the ground floor. So if you don't want to go up in your airport, if you're designing one which is only a single storey high, you can still service large planes using the remote large gates. So our plane should be coming in any time now. There's our first small one. And you see here our bus has come out to pick up the arriving passengers from our remote gate. And they're already lining up for boarding. And that bus will deposit our arriving passengers here who will now, now make their way either out to the pickup point or to baggage collection or apparently some of them need the toilets the restrooms they'll make it that way they also have to go that way round it's difficult to you can follow individual passengers um, but in that mix that heady mix of all those passengers it can be difficult to follow ones that are actually doing a transfer to a flight from the ground floor from one, one of these other gates and there's our bus taking our departing passengers out to this aircraft and as you can see we've set these channels up so that there is no mixing between arriving and departing passengers which you often see at major airports so a wrap-up of security in sim airport the first thing to remember is that you must have a security zone which totally separates the ticketing hall from where people arrive to catch to, to get their tickets for their planes and the actual gates themselves the aircraft and you must ensure that all external routes to the gates are also closed off either by walls or by fencing to ensure there is no way through to the gates apart from going through the security zone here you can have multiple security zones within your airport but they must all be separated by some non-secure space and the best way of checking your secure space is to use our secure areas here you can see here that beyond this security zone this is a secured sector this is unsecured because it's coming from the ticketing hall here everything on the ground floor is secured again behind this security zone however always make sure people have a way out of a security zone either going back through the security area itself or ideally by setting up things like the security gates which have two sides a green and a red side obviously enter and exit and bearing in the same thing in mind if you're using escalators or indeed moving walkways that they have an in and an out so if you're putting escalators into a secure area then you need to make sure that people have a way in and out using the escalators you can use one-way paths they work as well as a way of preventing people getting behind your security zone but be aware again you need to make sure they are they do allow people to get in and out of the secure zones and that's it i think for my fourth tutorial for sim airport covering the basics of security i think i've covered most everything you need to know but if there's any particular issues which I haven't covered here, then please do let me know by asking a question in the comments below. Other than that, of course, if you've enjoyed this or if you found it useful, it'd be great to hear from you. A click on the old thumbs up, a like would be lovely. Alternatively, of course, even better, if you've got any thoughts, any suggestions or any questions, do let me know through the comments box below. And of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now by clicking on the subscribe button. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play videos. But from me, Ajax Post, here, looking at security in Sim Airport. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.